As winter nears to an end and our baby's due date draws closer, we're scrambling to get a few major projects crossed off the list. This week our focus is wrapping up a mezzanine office build to give me some much needed workspace. But an unexpected visitor on the property has us both on edge and we find ourselves trying to find some answers. I'm gonna, um, <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. It's every little time I hear a stick break or a snap or a pop, I'm like looking over both shoulders the whole time because... What's going on? What is going on, dude? Mud, tape, and knives. Where's the drywaller? You're up, pregnant lady. Dang it, I'm the drywaller. I have done way more drywall while pregnant than I ever want to do again because I did this wall in my first trimester. I did downstairs in my second trimester and now we are third trimester drywalling but at least they're just half walls i'm hoping to get at least the seams taped tonight so that tomorrow i can do the next coat what why are you smiling because i'm super excited to drywall no you're not let's see it let's see the goo it's squishy that's good this goo spent one night in the bed of my truck and i was a little worried that it had frozen and maybe gotten messed up but what do you think I think it's okay. I think I need to mix it though. Oh my gosh. It's like a core sample. Interesting. Uh-oh. I think the peaks are still too stiff. This is not baking. This is building. Basically frosting a cake. What do you want me to do with that? Just spin it around in the snow. I think our ice snow has gotten a little harder since the last time Courtney did this. Dead battery. We've had some really cold temperatures over the last few days and it just kills the batteries. Okay. Woo! All right, back in business. Good morning guys. It is a very, very cold morning here. I think it got down to four degrees Fahrenheit last night. I gotta get my gloves on guys. It's too cold to be out here without gloves on. This morning I was out on a property walk with a forest manager. We were working on coming up with a forest management plan for our property, how to best manage the land and the trees for, for timber purposes. And uh, we came across something really interesting that I think you guys might wanna see. This is an area on the property that I really don't go to very often. And uh, here, check it out. That right there is a dead deer. And it was probably killed this morning because with how cold it was last night, when we got to it earlier today, it wasn't even stiff yet. And I know this might sound a little morbid and you might be wondering why I'm showing this to you. So the reason that I'm so interested in this deer is that it's a kill. It's either a coyote or mountain lion. We're having a hard time identifying the tracks. I'm gonna put up a game cam and see if we can't figure out 
what kind of animal is here on our property because this is a reminder to me that Cordy and I do live out here in the wilderness and uh, you know there are predator animals out here that could seriously injure our dogs or us and we need to be careful. So got the game cam, we're gonna put it up and hopefully we get a nice picture of uh, who this is on our property. Alrighty, I got the camera set up. I'm gonna um, <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. It's every little time I hear a stick break or a snap or a pop, I'm like looking over both shoulders the whole time because I have a feeling that whoever took that deer down is probably watching me. So I think it'd be a good idea to keep the dogs close to the shop for a while and hopefully we get an idea of what kind of animals here on the property. We'd like to thank Factor for sponsoring today's video. We have a lot going on around here this spring, especially with our baby on the way. So Factor is here to help us save time and energy with meals delivered straight to our door. I've been eating Factor meals for a few months now, and they're actually delicious. I have no idea how they make the chicken so juicy. It's more juicy than any chicken I've ever cooked. It's like meal prepping without actually having to do the prepping. And if I'm feeling fancy, Factor now offers gourmet plus meals. They include premium ingredients like perfectly cooked steak and broccolini. I don't actually know what broccolini is, but it's delicious. To be honest, I am eating filet mignon for breakfast, but I'm not sad about it. I'm keeping an eye out for their new surf and turf options coming soon. So if you've got big plans this spring, head to factor75.com or click on the link in the description below and use the code ambition50 for 50% 50 off your first factor box. That's factor75.com and the code ambition50 for 50% 50 off. And thanks again to Factor for fueling my crazy ideas. This morning I was able to get a coat of primer on everything, which means that I can do top coat tonight, which means that tomorrow we're gonna get to lay flooring. I didn't wanna have to go to the store, so I'm gonna just try to make paint that we have here work. So where did this paint come from? This is tiny exterior because it's the paint from our shipping container house. I think it's still good. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's only maybe frozen a couple of times. What is the foil for? <laughs> we also don't have any paint liners, so I'm gonna try to use aluminum foil. I can literally watch the paint dry. Speaking of paint drying, we've had a lot of questions lately on the channel about how we're heating the shop. And uh, well, we have two different heat options. Number one, we have this Sunfire heater here. This is a 150,000 BTU diesel fired portable heater that just cranks out the heat. It's so nice to be working on a project, fire this thing up, point it near where you're working. It'll melt all the snow off the car. The car will be warm, the tools are warm. Awesome to work with that. But there is a downside to this heater, which is that because it doesn't vent the combustion, it does put off some fumes and it also creates a lot of moisture. So running this heater in the shop actually causes the humidity levels in the shop to raise significantly. Our primary heat source in the shop is this EnergyLogic waste oil burner. So like last night I did an oil change on the skid steer and I was able to dump the waste oil just right into this and that's what's been heating the shop today. This heater works a lot more like a traditional furnace or wood stove. It's got a chimney on it and it ducts its combustion air to the outside. So in the shop there are no fumes at all. Something else that we've noticed that's interesting is that when we run this heater, the humidity in the shop drops dramatically. Currently in the shop, it is 55 degrees and 33% humidity. So I guess that's a really long-winded way to say I'm watching the paint dry because the humidity levels have dropped. The Paint Ninja. It's gonna be a while before I can climb a ladder again. So I think that I'm gonna wait and then maybe this summer we'll bring a scissor lift up to finish that wall. Oh, I'm exhausted. 
I used to be able to do this all day. The baby's feet are up here right now. And so when I, when I bend over with the roller, they like stab me. This is exciting. It's starting to feel more like an office. Laying flooring is not our favorite thing to do because it's physically exhausting, but it's gonna be a huge transformation. So I'm really looking forward to doing that tomorrow. So with that, we'll see you guys tomorrow. So it's been two days since I set that game cam. I'm gonna go grab it and hopefully we're gonna know here pretty quick what kind of animal we're dealing with here on the property. There are a lot of footprints around here, but the animal is now gone. I'm gonna grab the camera, bring it back to Courtney and uh, we'll find out who's been over here. I actually think they might mostly be birds. That's a small dog, probably a coyote. Quite a few of those around here. And this trail is super burned in right here. You guys wanna go for a little walk with me and see what else we can find? More dog prints. A lot more dog prints. That looks like an elk. I don't think the elk is the culprit. Oh, there's some more deer fur. <laughs> this could possibly be a bad idea to be wandering around out here by myself. Ooh, gorgeous day though up here. There are also a whole bunch of ravens flying around. I think that they've probably been picking up the leftovers. Look at all this. Holy smokes, there's so many animal prints right here. And it, you know, it snowed just a few days ago, so this is all fairly recent. Yeah, I just went on a little hike. I got kind of distracted, but yeah, by my, yeah. Yes, I'm going on a hike by myself after finding a dead animal carcass. So anyways, I'm headed back now. Hi hey dogs. Hey, do you have a sweater on? Or do you have a guaba? <laughs> All right, you ready to see what we found? I don't know. I'm like, I'm equally don't want to know and want to know. Here we go. For whatever we whatever find. Whatever we find. <laughs> There's me arriving. Up. Birds. Oh, look at all those birds. It's a lot of birds. Nope. No. Nothing. Nothing. Well, unfortunately, we looked at all of the game cam footage and we didn't capture anything. So, whatever's out there is elusive and we're going to have to just keep trying. So, why don't you guys drop in the comments down below what do you think is out there? Oh, buddy. Last step. The last step before the last step before the last step? Yeah. All right, you guys, we are hoping to get all the flooring laid today. We're using the same flooring in here that we used in the rest of the apartment, which is a vinyl plank that I really liked working with because you just score it and snap it, and it goes pretty quick. So let's see if we can get this done. I 
love the flooring step because it's such a huge transformation and it goes from this unfinished subfloor to this finished floor so quickly, especially on a space this small. I'm also really happy with how the color turned out and I cannot wait to see this done. And I think we're gonna get it done today, you guys. We'll see. First row down. The most complicated cut in the whole space. Yeah. This is how not to use a saw. I'm not even going to test it, and I'm just going to go for it. All right. Like a glove. It is. So this is the lobby of my office, also known as the waiting room. You stand right here until I'm ready for you. Is that for me? <laughs> I'm instructed right to stand here. there until other until told I'm you, you can even sit on the stair while you wait. So passing the stovepipe through the floor for our waste oil heater was a little bit of a challenge. So one option we considered was running the chimney out the back wall of the shop, but because of the wall penetration required for this type of waste oil heater, there's not enough space between the top of the heater and the bottom of the mezzanine floor to have the thing exit out the back. So the wall penetration wasn't going to work for us. And what we ended up deciding to do was just use a section of double wall pipe here to minimize our distance to combustibles. Now we have this opening in the floor around the double wall stovepipe that after the flooring is in, we'll make a metal trim ring for it to cover the space. You don't trust me to not just fall through that hole? Yes, don't fall through that hole. Final piece. Last one. That took less than an hour. That's awesome. With that, it's time to move on to my absolute favorite step, probably one of Riley's least favorite steps, which is the trim work, but it's about to transform this whole space. I got all of the trim pre-stained this morning, so this should go pretty quick. Well, they're not very straight. <laughs> it's pretty bad. And just like that, the trim is done and I think it's time to start moving furniture in. We're gonna start with my desk and then I have a few more pieces of furniture that I picked up to help add some more storage. Where did this go? Over here. I think it's gonna go in the corner right here. This is kind of a strange space. I think we're gonna have to bring all the furniture up here and then like Tetris it around and figure out what's gonna work. Oh, we get to move everything twice. Or maybe three times. I think that was the easy thing to move. So I was trying to. Oh, yeah, the box is super light. Who made such a small stairway? <laughs> Of the <laughs> given the giant stovepipe sticking up through the center. 
think that works. Okay. And my sewing machine's gonna have a home now? This was in the woodshed. A <laughs> sewing machine has no business in the woodshed. Oh, it's finally gonna have a home. I cannot believe that I have my own space now. I think that adding a little bit of separation between our house and Courtney's office where she works is gonna be huge when the baby gets here to just be able to have her own space where she kind of gets away from what's going on over there. Yes, to get away from the baby. <laughs> Feels really good to have one more big thing crossed off the list before the baby gets here. So with that guys, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Are you admiring my view? Yeah, have you showed them your view yet? It's pretty sweet. I think this is the best view in the property. There's two last things that I need to do tonight and they're the final reasons I think why I wanted an office. This is the plaque we got when we hit 100,000 subscribers, which was about a year ago. And this was a really special gift that was made for us and so I've also been looking forward to putting this in our office.